format. In this case, we just use paper, right? Um, we constrain the time. We set a time limit, and we describe a number of solutions you have to generate to a week. And we constrain the tools, so you just get a sharp either it's not computers or anything involved that would already have some sort of answers implicit, right? Okay, and the whole thing obviously should help you to avoid getting in, in your, into any detail, right? This is just about generating ideas and not about generating detailed solutions. We want to deconstrain technology. So anything is possible, right? We want to deconstrain the scope of the brief so there's no project limitations. And we want to deconstrain the resources so whatever it takes theoretically can be done. Right? And that should help you to break out of any preconceptions you have about your projects, any heuristics you apply to find a shortcut to a solution, and any sort of biases you, you, you bring into this. So the whole idea is that you create as many possible solutions to agree, as quickly as possible agree, right? So we said that anything is possible. And then one last thing is we share not everything in a group. So why do we do this? Well, these are four aspects of creative personality that we want to kind of train by these exercises. The personality part of it, the curiosity and tolerance for ambiguity. So if you think of the Picassos of this world, which is, you know, they're always kind of looking, what, what, what can I make that's new and different out of what they have? So we want to stimulate the curiosity and we want to increase your level of tolerance for ambiguity because we're going to give you quite weight and bully briefs, right? Idea generation. By pushing you into generating lots of stuff really quickly, we kind of want to train the fluency of idea generation. Um, confidence. Because you have to share it in a group and because you have to work really fast and you get used to it, uh, to doing it really fast, we want to increase your confidence and we uh, motivation by kind of putting it in a framework where you have to do a certain number of things in a certain amount of time it becomes a little bit like a game and you're in a larger group and that should increase your motivation so it's like a workout for your creativity brief yeah okay so let's try to put it in practice so what i've done in the past this is something I first learned at Flow, where Martina and I, and a few other people you may know, used to work. Um, you start off a workshop where you apply this technique with, with a, a kind of warm-up thing, right? That sort of loosens the whole thing up a little bit. Normally, some a really silly task, right? Um, to get everyone in the mindset. And in addition to the things I've already said. It's about having a brief with a really wide solution space. Yes, so there is a lot of potential for different ideas. Um, the solutions are quite simple, so you don't you don't start thinking about detail. And it's a funny task. It's something humorous or really absurd. So you don't worry about you know failing. You don't worry about you know having the wrong thing really because it's really just about having. So, example. <laughs> what we used to do at Flow was uh, these were two, two, two Flow classics. So they're not invented by me. You know, I'm just, I'm just repackaging, repackaging something someone else has invented. Design a device to amuse the dog, or design a device to communicate with aliens, or design a device to overcome traffic jams, yeah? or change the weather. Okay? And that's what we're going to start with. So, any specific tasks of these you want to do? Votes for a music dog? Okay, votes for communicate with aliens? Overcome traffic jams? Not that many. Change the weather? <laughs> I think it is a device to amuse a dog. Now, if you can kind of form groups of three, because we have a quite large group here, okay? And in a group of three, I'm going to give you three minutes to come up with three designs.
what are you guys um, thinking? <laughs> what approach are you taking? Use a dog. Building a device that barks like a dog. It's whenever the dog barks, it barks again. And pretend to be a cat. Good idea. Just brainstorming at the so, what's your initial approach to the challenge? Uh, we're trying to define our personalities based on dogs reality. that we are, dogs that we know. So I think we just get stuck into it. Yeah. So we think about. Are you used to have? Is there any different So are you guys coming up with some creative ideas? What are your ideas so far? Something for hide and seek. Something to encourage it up. My dog likes playing hide and seek. Something I don't know, like something to throw the ball. Getting them to run around the house. Thirty seconds to go. So um, it would start playing something, and they're like, "Where did that come from?" So, oh no! So we won't control that does that. Well, there is. There is a. An instrument that does that, like a whistle, uh -huh. I think that produces ultrasound sounds. Oh my god, great. <laughs> so everything you've come up with is already existing. <laughs> that doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, we didn't actually get further than sort of imagining what that would be. Okay, cat projection, like. <laughs> Laser kind of thing. Oh. All right, yeah, okay. Uh, projector cat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> projector cat, good. Okay, right, so that was the warm up. So, in a real workshop, you maybe do a few of these. So, we do have four serious tasks to follow. Now, this one is actually still shaking straight out of our compass.
You did nine ideas in three minutes. Three, 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 three for each. Okay. Well, go for it. Okay. Really? Yeah, please. <laughs> All right, okay. So gaps in diary, we're going to create personal virtual time so the, the, the people wouldn't actually realize, but we would change their, their watches. <laughs> so, so they think it was, I used to do that with my boss. Uh, used to think it was nine o'clock and it was really, you know, it's 10 o'clock. We had to book everything in our advance. Um, if we could find a sweet spot where everyone was available, we were going to allow people to join. So your phone could go. So there's, there's another 24 hours. Uh, this one's a bit sensible actually. It was about prioritizing people's uh, tasks and creating a Venn diagram of where the intersected was the sweet spot. Uh, and then there was the everything is nice. So we then time and space. So you know, it didn't matter that I was talking in a week. This time it'd still be a person <laughs> on real time. Um, uh, facilities where we're teleporting the equipment or people, um, or it, you didn't need equipment, it was in your brain, so it was just there. Yeah. Uh, or it was a personal device, that's, that's a sensible one. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, making a booking was Google Calendar, um, <laughs> 5000 Infinity, uh, or, or it was. Uh, a virtual note appeared on the back of your hand, like a little, yeah. you know, oh, bugger, I can't I've got to remember that. It appeared, and it was like, that, that was your reminder. Or it was a word. Anyone else who wants to have a go? Do we come up? Yeah. 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 I think the idea is, is that uh, in the future, nobody has time. So you actually go back in the past to arrange the meeting. <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> So you find time in people's diary in the past, and then that's when you organize your video conference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second idea is that uh, we are in this uh, amazing technological space, so everything is controlled by mind. I only need to think of people who's going to be part of the meeting to immediately identify what are the slots in their time. Uh -huh. So I'm sitting here, I can just think about them, I get the slot they need. And I can book okay. a diary there, that's when we do the conference. Okay. And the reminder is sent. Well. The reminder is sent also by, by mind, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, good. So, we're almost done. So, so the idea behind this technique is that once you're done with it, you start because you analyze really all these ideas you've come up with and see which ones of those is actually points me towards a quite strong design drive, an ideal that we could aspire to, even though we know we can't do this now, right? Um, what are the key qualities of that solution, like in terms of user experience, because that, that's what we're doing, and what does that mean for now? And which of these things we could actually translate into something, you know, hack together something with today's technology, yeah? Um, and this is it, that's the technique. So, and 25 minutes are, and 29 seconds are over, so thank you. Um, and I've been doing sketch noting since about November 2011, so not very long. Um, and the purpose of this evening is to really give you a flavour of sketch noting so you can have a go at getting started with it. Um, you don't have to be a brilliant uh, sketch or illustrator to do this. So, um, very quick uh, kind of summary of what we've got this evening. Quick introduction. Uh, we're going to have a bit of time looking at some techniques and the process that you use for sketch noting and then you're going to have a go at creating your own sketch note so you can't get away with not doing anything because it's a workshop <laughs> okay so to start with um what is sketch noting so mike Rody, who's written the sketch note handbook i think coined the term uh, back in about 2006 or 7 um so it's a form of visual note taking it's really about kind of making your notes memorable and something that kind of is a really good uh, sort of visual trigger from that event you went to. So you, it's the process of kind of listening and, and looking at uh, the speaker, um, processing that, and then uh, as you're processing that, you'll come up with all sorts of creative ideas that you translate onto the paper. Sounds simple, so we'll go through um, a bit more of that later. So 
there's lots of different styles and something I wanted to kind of convey is that it's really, you know, there's so many styles out there. It's about having your own personal style and not really getting hung up on, well, it doesn't look as good as so-and-so's or whatever. It's, you know, it's really about your style. So some of them are more graphical, kind of text-based. Uh, uh, some of them are more illustrative, so Eva Lotta, um, who's based in London, does some really beautiful sketch notes, um, but she is uh, a trained illustrator, so um, you know, don't feel put off by the fact that some people have a very nice drawing style. Um, everyone can give it a go. Uh, some people do a lot more content, like Francis's ones on the left there, um, and Mike Rady's ones are generally, you know, he uses a little molar scheme notebook, um, and he kind of focuses on key points and quotes. Um, so, you've got to discover your own style. This was my first sketch note, I think, one of Lisa Roy Chelt's talks, um, and then I've kind of developed it over time. I've got a bit of a messy style, I would describe it as, um, but uh, that, that's, that's what I do. So, why do sketch noting? Well, there's a really good uh, reason for it. So, um, the cognitive psychology behind it is dual coding theory. Um, so, if information is conveyed to you visually and verbally, um, it's actually much easier to learn and to remember that information. Um, this, is, this is something that um, Alan Pavio uh, came up with the dual coding theory. There's been a, quite a lot of research around it. Um, so that, that's kind of one of the reasons. The other main reason from my perspective um, is skills and confidence. So when I uh, went into a full-time user experience role in 2011. I wanted to improve my sketching, so it's great for exploring design problems with your team, um, working at a whiteboard, uh, coming up with um, storyboards, uh, scamps, anything like that. So it's a really good, uh, useful, practical thing to feel confident in, in your role. So in terms of getting started, um, Firstly, you need uh, your tools of the trade. So, pens. Um, I really like these kind of fine liner pens. Uh, so, this one's a uni pin. Um, some people like Muji pens. It really depends uh, what suits you, really. Um, I'm very keen on these pro markers, electric set pro markers. They're absolutely brilliant. I love the, the warm grey one. That's really nice for the shading. Um, notebooks. Uh, I personally like the spiral bound ones because they t turn the page really easily and um, you can kind of rest it on it. It's a nice, easy one to work with. Some people like the molar schemes. Um, they're a bit small for my liking. Um, again, you just sort of try what suits you. Um, when you get to the event, make sure you've got a good seat with a nice clear view of the speaker. Um, try and have all your pens to hand before you start. It's really awful for the people around you if you're kind of tipping your bag out on the floor trying to find that one special pen you really want. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe try and get there a bit early to get a good seat. So when you're doing live sketching um, and listening in, really listen in for those kind of key points that you'll want to remember um, when you kind of revisit your notes afterwards. So this is really about, the, the sketch notes are primarily for you and about your experience of that talk and kind of about a visual cue of what you kind of remember from it. Um, Listen out for great quotes, so what, what kind of things would you tweet if you were tweeting during that talk? Um, it's hard to do both, by the way, I've tried. Um, so listen out for good quotes. Um, if kind of, like, as images sort of pop into your head, don't be afraid to try sketching them, because that's the kind of fun thing about sketch noting. Um, and don't stress if you can't capture everything, because there's no way you can capture everything. You just have to try and train yourself to listen out to the key points and capture those. It's, it's hard, but, uh, but you can kind of like train yourself into it. And a good speaker will lay out the structure and then talk at the start, which really helps, by the way. Um, so you need to think about the structure of your sketch notes. Um, I use this kind of path where I just kind of meander backwards and forwards down the page. Some people divide their sketches up into a grid. Some people kind of just do a, a top to bottom style. Um, there's lots of different ways. Mike Rody talks about this in his sketch note handbook. Um, just have a go and try and see what works for you really. Um, at the end of the day, um, people kind of come up a lot in um, talks and you want to know how to draw people. So uh, I just did this one for the other people, but just to first group, but just to kind of like do. So very simple kind of shape of a person. It's a sort of a round head, rectangular body, 
little legs and you can always kind of build on this you know, it's very 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 simple quick to do so you know if you stick the ball that kind of a, a quick drawing um, you can always go back and add a bit more detail afterwards and you can play around practice drawing uh, people different poses um, you can always go a bit higher fidelity um, if you you know if you get a bit more confident so it really depends on your on your sketching abilities um, and then you can kind of start adding a little bit of character to them um, when you get more confident um, in terms of uh, your kind of visual vocabulary it's really good to practice everyday objects so um, just kind of think about it's actually incredibly hard sometimes even though you see these things all the time to think well, how would I actually draw that when you come to it so it's good to kind of practice drawing these things um, and then when you come to do your sketch notes you've got a kind of a wider repertoire of things that you're used to drawing um, so just general things like iPad, iPhone they're, they're kind of really obvious ones um, but yeah try, try drawing a few objects um, containers really good for making information kind of pop out on the page so those like the, the title of the talk the speaker name important quotes um, so things like speech bubbles um, ribbons clouds I saw this nice uh, little kind of signpost on someone's sketch notes the other day uh, there's lots of creative ideas you can use to make stuff stand out um, to give your uh, notes a bit more of a flow so you can kind of follow how the process of the talk went you might want to divide up the information so there's lots of kind of little techniques you can use for dividing up information and connecting it um, so arrows and kind of dotted lines and stuff um, the kind of, I like the cloud kind of line with a bit of shadow the, again just try out a few things and if you look at other people's sketch notes you'll see lots of, lots of these ideas out there and you can probably pick up a lot of ideas just from looking generally at, at design and seeing what kind of things, you know, quite a few of you are probably visual designers anyway. Typography um, is quite hard. It's something I'm really bad at and that I'm trying to get better. So what I'm doing is um, using uh, just basically drawing fonts from Photoshop. So I kind of blow them up really big and then I have a go at hand drawing them. Um, and it does help because um, I really like these kind of scrolly fonts. I think they look really nice. Um, you know, and just kind of like adding a bit of shadow or an outline. Mike Rohde talks about this really quick technique for just doing two line letters. So it's literally sort of very easy, you know, to give your uh, letters a bit of weight and then just add another line and it gets a bit thicker. So that's a way that he kind of builds up some of the bigger um, words that he uses on his sketch notes. Oh, I've lost it. There we go. Um, and my handwriting is awful, um, and so now I try and write in capitals, and that was pointed out to me because one of my friends couldn't read them at all. So, um, okay, so that was fast and furious, and now you're going to get a game. Um, so what I'm going to do is, if one should have, um, hopefully, a bit of paper. Um, so there's some paper down the side here. If you haven't got a bit of paper, please shout now. Has everyone got these? Has everyone got a pen? to lean on, there's some bits of cardboard down the side here. Okay, so one Several years ago here at TED, Peter Skillman introduced a design challenge called the Marshmallow Challenge. And the idea is pretty simple. Teams of four have to build the tallest freestanding structure out of 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard of tape, one yard of string, and a marshmallow. The marshmallow has to be on top. And though it seems really simple, it's actually pretty hard because it forces people to collaborate very quick on planning, organizing, they sketch in, they lay out spaghetti. Uh, they spend the majority of their time assemble because the weight of the marshmallow causes the entire structure to buckle and to collapse. So and they cheat, they uh, get distracted, they, and they produce really lame structures. And of course, there's it's pretty amazing, as Peter tells us. Uh, not only do they, do they produce the tallest structures, interesting structures of them all. So the question you want to ask is, how come? Why? What is it about them? And Peter likes to say that no CEO of Spaghetti Inc., right? <laughs> they don't time, spend time jockeying for power. But there's another reason as well. And the reason is that this time, and what happens? It's a crisis. Sound familiar, right? 
<laughs> okay, what Kinder is that they start with the marshmallow and they build prototypes, successive prototypes, always as the essence of the iterative process. And with each version, kids get instant feedback about what works and what doesn't work. So the capacity to play in prototype is, is really essential, but let's look at how different teams perform. So the average for most people is around 20 inches, business school students, better than most adults. Who does the very best? Architects and engineers, thankfully. <laughs> and, Nine inches of the tallest structure uh, I've seen. And why is it? Because they understand triangles and self-reinforcing geometrical patterns are the key to building self-reinforced uh, uh, stable structures. So uh, CEOs, a little bit better than average, but here's where it gets interesting. If you put an executive admin on the team, they get significantly better. Challenge, and the reason is I help create digital tools and processes to help uh, teams build cars and video. Doesn't it? The, the challenge provides a shared experience, a common language, a common stance to build the right prototype. And so this is the value of the experience of this so simple exercise. And those of you who are interested may want to go to around the world of how people tweak and adjust the system. There's world records that are on this as well. And the fundamental is sensitive to the task and that we apply the very best of our thinking, our feeling, and our doing to the challenge that we have uh, at hand. It's sometimes a little prototype of this experience is all that it takes from uh, an uh-oh moment to a ta-da moment, and that can make a big difference. Thank you very much. And afterwards, to watch uh, the video of it, if, if you're lucky enough that it's been videoed, and that's really interesting. You kind of, or you can do it, you know, watch an online talk and watch it a couple of times and see what you're capture with that bit. It is, it is sort of training yourself to, to kind of like pick out the, the key points. Sorry. The, yeah, I, I, I found that uh, sometimes I get absorbed into trying to do one particular detail and then some part of my brain would listen to, oh wait a minute, that is actually a key point and I remember what you said in the beginning, focus on the key points so I would stop doodling literally and, and kind of move on to the next and important point that I don't sort of forget and then go back and finish the detail. Yeah, exactly. Like so it's quite okay to kind of start something, just put down a couple of words or something to remind you of it and then move on and come back to it later. Because in a longer talk, obviously you're not as rushed as watching something like this. Um, you know, and you do have opportunities to kind of... Yes. Uh, I really like the idea of sketch noting. Um, I think one of the most important things is that like, when you release it, you actually see the connecting points mm -hmm. of uh, every single like part. Because I believe every speaker, when they give out talks, they must have the structure. And then by sketching, you actually like facilitate the structure. Yeah. In your mind. Yeah. So yeah. So having some of those sort of devices, like the connectors, or kind of grouping things together, it's a bit like visual design, really. So. Um, you know, you've got to think about kind of maybe using some of the sort of containers or devices to connect things together. I tend to use arrows sometimes, um, but yeah, getting that flow or structure as the speakers talk is is kind of one of the key things. Yeah. No, at this point, so you already mentioned mm. you get a couple of slides with the visual, it's the visual language. Mm. It's having those that language ready to fall on. Because of course, I, I've written down some text. <laughs> which is I'm, fine, which I know, is I'm fine, yeah, yeah. As opposed to yeah. maybe a, a graph, you know, graphical representation, which will have a bigger punch. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you, I, I sketched this talk when, uh, when I was preparing this workshop. Um, so on the left is the one that I did um, kind of while I was listening <coughs> to it, and then you can see I've kind of embellished it quite a lot with some shading and some colour and stuff on the right. Um, so it's a, bit, it's a bit hard to see, but I've got it somewhere here. Um, yeah, so I did, I did a lot more kind of detail on it afterwards. Um, yeah. I was thinking, well, that's interesting because one perhaps I'm just going to mention is when I'm at conferences or listen to talks, uh, if you get keywords and a few things down before the next presentation, while it's fresh in your mind, you can add to it. Yes. So I think yes, capturing it yeah. real time straight yeah. off is yeah. a bit too much. If you have the keywords, you can actually add to it, which will help it stick for longer. Yeah, yeah. And some people. And some people like to, to use pencil. I personally, I like to just commit to pen straight away because I don't have the time to go back afterwards and kind of go over the whole thing again. Some people prefer to do pencil. It's really kind of, you know, up to you and how, how you feel you want to do it if you want to give it a go. Um, yes. It's very useful because if you're a speaker for a talk, you have to think, 
how easy would it be to create a sketch note? You know, how simple are the points? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point actually about yeah the sort of reverse of the reverse of sketch noting. Yes. I keep running out of space. Yeah, so I was never really sure whether I should just yeah. start a new page or just fill in a little bit more yeah. in that corner over there. Yeah. Or... It's very hard, but in, in, a, in a longer talk, you can watch the clock and see, you know, are you halfway through as the speaker, kind of 10 minutes from the end, 20 minutes from the end, and you can kind of figure out how, how much space have I got. Um, so there are ways to, to kind of get around that. Um, I did want to mention, I want to take a couple more questions. I did want to mention... Um, you know, it's really fun to share your sketch notes. Um, so you can really quickly take a photo after you've done them, uh, or you can scan them if you want better quality um, and, and share them. Because it's really great for people who aren't at the event. They get a mixture of different kind of media. So quite often on lanyards, you'll get like the slides, the sketch notes. Um, you'll get kind of blog posts, and I find it really useful if I haven't been to a conference to have all those different perspectives. Um, so that, that's that's kind of fun. I've got some tips in here. I'm going to upload. I'm not going to go through all of these um, because we haven't got time. But I will upload my slides and I'll tweet it uh, so that um, hopefully the uh, your XPA can pick it up. And, and if you want to have a look at them, they'll be on SlideShare. Um, so yeah, just just a few sort of kind of practical things there that I've learned from doing sketch notes. Um, and there's some resources as well. Um, and you can share your sketch notes into this Flickr group um, for the sketch note handbook. Um, and there's also sketch note army that Mike really curates. Um, sorry, yes, over there you had a point. Yeah, um, you brought on the first point, practice a lot. Yes. How much do you practice? I mean, well, you're an ex expert now. I'd say, so well, I say practice a lot, but you know, until I did this workshop, I probably didn't really practice in between. Um, so I just go to talks. I organise monthly talks, so I have an opportunity once a month to do this. Um, but actually, I don't practice that much. So I, so I did a lot of drawing when I was a kid. Um, and then I didn't do it for years and years until I kind of went back into this job that I'm in now. Um, so I guess I've got some experience to draw on from being a child and doing lots of drawing then. Um, but yeah, I kind of, um, so I did a lot of drawing for this workshop because obviously I thought, well, you know, I couldn't present you with slides with pictures that I haven't drawn really. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely helped. To I made me laugh when on the talk they were saying about the kids because of Sunday morning I didn't know what to do with my kids. So they were drawing and they started, you know, some nice writing and they were much, much better than me. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we have to move on now, so thank you very much.
paper on there. Um, and they have some categories in there that you need to fill in that will help you uh, to structure your presentation. And you have to then present from that piece of paper. So you also have to pick somebody at the end to help you to present. Um, so I think that was it. So remember, take a pen and a post-it note uh, package now. Because now I'm going to tell you what the ideas that I would like you to work on. So the idea that I would like you to work on is the connected garden. And what I mean by that is the connected backyard. So whatever you can come up with and have an idea about, about what connected backyard it could be, time starts now. One minute. Just right, right, right. Everything goes uh, on your own, uh, individually, on post-it notes. As many ideas you can. One idea per post-it note. So, really good ideas. Be a bit more descriptive in what you write down. Um, uh, write it down. Come up with a good idea. Anything with a connected garden. And there are 30 seconds left to do this task. Okay, just think of something that reminds you of a connected garden. What does that mean? Right, one minute is over. Stop now. Take your post-it note. Post them in your case on the table so that everybody can see them. Put them on the window or on the wall now. Uh, have a look at them and quickly decide which idea sounds really promising. So get up, get moving, and have a look at the ideas. Okay, have a little bit of a read. Oh, you know. <laughs> Uh, internet all around the garden. But I don't think Excellent. Somebody else want to quickly put Google Earth Garden Tour. It's a Pippin Tour of Pippin's Gardens by Google Earth. Somebody else to phone operates. Okay. Anybody like I'm going to give you one minute to think of an idea that sounds really promising. Okay. 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 Okay, do you guys have an idea? Pick one, anyone. Neighborhood. Know in your neighborhood who's got tomatoes. Who's got okay, listen. If you haven't picked out an, an idea, it's your own call. The time starts now. You've got 10 minutes to develop the idea with the help of your visualizer and your Okay, do you guys have an idea? Turn around the sheet and fill the sheet in. You can use one sheet to just...
branches that then pop out of the soil to give them water or to, to give them food? That's the cloud. What if it's sunny? It, no, the cloud is <laughs> <It's> It's London. <laughs> it's London. <laughs> It's called Garden View. It's about connecting all the folks with great garden but that are feeling lonely in the countryside with young, young urban socialite but who don't have any, any green in their life and wish they could be a bit more in contact with nature. The idea would be uh, to increase the social link and the happiness and uh, reduce loneliness and depression and by bringing the country home. Yeah, so it's for people with gardens and then people without gardens. They can see the other people's gardens. So for instance, you've got a lot of lack of space in the city. You know, you want a bit of a kind of country view. So someone in the country will share it with someone there. And you've got a nice mantelpiece here. Um, so this is looking at someone else's garden. And you get the benefit. So, technology. Yeah, the idea we could have partners with Google Glasses who providing the easy filming uh, in the garden and connecting that to a big class doing TV that those young kids are likely to have through the web. And we could partner with um, plant delivery and shops online like crocus.co.uk. We could also... Uh, time is get up. Thank you very much, guys. Well done. Um, for a change, we're going to now start with the acting group. Are you guys ready to do some role play? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, your time starts now. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to my shop, the Connected Garden Experience Shop. Okay, I have an um, allergy to any kind of plants, uh, any kind of bees and other stuff, and I'm so sick, And uh, but I need to, oh, because I feel depression, whatever, I need some... Um, virtual garden in my house, do you oh, have any solutions? Of course, you probably don't have much space in your home either. No, yeah. You live in a small flat in London. I do. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> well, we have just the thing. He knows his customers. We will install monitors all around your room, which will create the effect of a garden. So you can have trees in the taller monitors, and you can have small plant plots as well. And we can even create a small water feature out of the plasma screens on the floor. So, How can I implement it? It's very simple. <laughs> they come out of the ground or they can be on the ceiling. So go away now and enjoy <laughs> your garden. <laughs> you have plants in the box. Okay. And the accessories of Google Glasses. And time is up. Thank you very much, guys. Well done. Okay, turn around, guys, to the wall. Who's going to present? 
You guys? Anyone? Come on, it's not going to be Philippa. Don't be shy. Okay, brilliant. You've got one minute. Go. I think part of the idea here is the idea that it would be an uh, urban garden. Urban gardens in, uh, where, where people would grow maybe one particular vegetable in their backyard and then share that information with all of their neighbors as to what they might be able to get out of it. And plants, they would, they would have to actually work in the garden. It's a, it's a community building thing. It's not sort of that you would just, uh, it's not instantaneous that it's uh, the food arriving at your doorstep. You have to actually put some work into it. So plants will let you know if they're hungry or need water or if they're ready to eat. And you have uh, trading interfaces that you could trade plants or, or vegetables uh, as you watch them. And uh, planting interfaces as well as if you need to plant carrots, if you want to plant carrots or tomatoes or cabbages or whatever it is. That's about it. Brilliant, 40 seconds. Right. right, thank you very much, guys, for this. Um, I'm very interested in what you guys thought of um, the time pressure that you were under. So maybe starting with each group, what did you think? How did that make you feel? Uh, was that positive, negative? What do you think? Time pressure. Or maybe open to everybody. I, I think it was good, but I did feel that because it was such a large group, we weren't all able to interact. Okay. What about you guys over there? What did you think about the time pressure? Well, actually, for the literature, you read people like Don Norman, it says that, you know, when you apply the pressure, you actually get the attention narrows, you become less creative. Okay. So it makes sense if you're more relaxed, you become more creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a literature. There. Okay, there you go. What did you personally think? Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> there you go. What did you? <laughs> what, what about you guys? What, how how was that with the time pressure you had? I thought it was pretty good actually. Um, mostly because it made us make some really quick, quite harsh decisions, especially that first two minutes when you have to choose at the end of it, choose your idea. And we looked at all these ideas, and you know we had a lot. And at the end we just had to go, yeah, that one. Let's go with that one. And that was quite good for forcing us to do that. I think if we had the opportunity, we would have pressed it. Okay. I think I think you need to. I don't. I think you always need. To a kind of procrastination period, so I think you might have got to the idea quickly, mm -hmm. but then I think you need to think about it for a while. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put your money there and, and just yeah. go for it and run ahead easily. So I think you need a, a pause period for it to. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you, and we would usually not do a workshop like this where you know there's so much pressure going on and so many different groups at the same time. So usually, you know, to find out which ID you want to choose, or maybe you want to work on several, um, you would have much more time. But uh, for the sake of today's exercise, I just wanted to show you kind of the whole process. So actually, what idea you chose was not really that important. Uh, but yes, you're right, absolutely. Usually, you should have more time for that. How did you guys feel about having this sheet of paper with these different categories on? Did that, uh, how did that help you? It, it makes sure we covered all the, all the babies. Mm -hmm. uh, Body structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about, what about you, Yes. I think that it's um, better probably to have a facilitator rather than have participants trying to sort of govern themselves. Mm -hmm. Somebody who would encourage people to speak. And to get consensus as well, to mm -hmm. say, you know, how does everybody feel about that? You know, hands up and quickly sort of move on, somebody who's experienced moving things through quickly. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, agree. We also never work with groups that are that massive. So, and you guys were like by far the largest group of, of the evening before we had much fewer people. So, okay. What about how did you find um, working with an illustrator to help you? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. Why, why did it, Why did you like that? Well, I, I think it's more just I like the style and, and, and vision. I'm not sure. I think the ideas began to sort of filtered around between one or two or three people, and it, it kind of evolved out of that. So we're, we're sharing, I guess, an individual's idea and the animators. Okay. As well. It's an interesting pace as well. There's something about watching someone draw something and then having the time to think about it before it's finished. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't have to sort of move on to the next thing really quickly. Just to sort of to mull it over a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting. So it's what did you guys think about the role play? That's hard in 20 seconds. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, did you find it difficult? Yeah. But uh, actually using the Lego blocks was actually really fun to actually illustrate what it was that we were trying to get across. Okay. Um, yeah, I think without the Lego blocks, Okay. Well, that's usually one of you know one form of workshop that we sometimes do is actually with Lego um, and not about acting, but you know using Lego as a means to kind of describe a scene or or um, you know an story. experience, a story. 
Um, but it was technically not possible that we could do that today because that involves filming it and then putting it on the computer and stuff. But um, if you're interested in what kind of workshops we do, if you need help, if you just want to know more, uh, grab one of Philip's business cards. Uh, he has loads and just get in touch with us. Uh, we're always happy to chat and I think I'm running out of time and I have to stop, I think. Do I? Thank you very much. <laughs>